Hey everybody, welcome Chosen Abbasi. Yes. <laughs> In the weirdest social distancing live stream that I've ever done. You can tell us all about what you've been up to. Um, we've got some exciting stuff coming up on Twitch, on YouTube, all the fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but today we're going to hang out with Tosin. He's going to show us some of his Abbasi guitars. Um, I, I know you've got some new sick stuff coming up. Yeah. Yeah. We have some, um, we have a, our Legion series coming out, which is, you know, uh, it's uh, our Korean made guitars mm -hmm. and it offers, you know, all the same features, the Fishman Fluence, my signature set, uh, multi-scale individual saddles, locking tuners, but it's at a lower price point than the American made stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's we're excited because I think some of our customers have uh, been waiting. I think for an opportunity to get something a little bit less expensive than the USA made stuff. Yeah, and um, so that's dropping in a few weeks. So cool. Yeah, and you can we can order that uh, on the website direct. Yeah, yeah. The we're gonna release some. You know, some <laughs> we'll be releasing the like some promotional content and things like that and inform people how to order the guitars if they want uh -huh. so yeah but we, we do direct sales yeah so from what i remember you told me the last time you had the, the guitars in stock you sold out in how many minutes i mean the strings were gone in less than a minute <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's just like you know we've been really uh focused on just releasing these batches that you know they're not very big batches but they're you know we build the guitars first and then we offer them for sale and you know, people have been really interested, so it's it's been a thing where when we do go live with you know some inventory, it kind of goes like that. The nice thing about the the line we have coming from um, the the Legion series is that we have a larger inventory, so it's it's a little less likely that things will sell out as quickly. So it's finally our chance to like offer a lot of guitars to a lot of people. The one that I borrowed from you is that similar? What we talked about is, here. This is this is actually a prototype of. Of exactly what time we made some small changes from what you what you have here, but yeah. So this is one of the finishes. This is a basswood body with a a burl top, and it's all matte satin. Mm -hmm. um, so let me zoom into you. I don't know what camera. To there you go. There you go. That's the, the one right go. in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. This thing is really cool. It's got like a stealth stealth look to it. So <laughs> and then um. It's got a really, we, t we spent some time refining this neck joint because uh, the guitar is a bolt-on, unlike the American-made ones. Let me move this out of the way. But you can see here that the neck s sculpts up to create a seamless merging with the upper bout of the body. And then we have this contour here for fret axis for your thumb. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and then it's a Wenge neck which I really enjoy, the feel and the sound of Wenge, ebony fingerboard, mm -hmm. locking tuners, multi-scale, Fishman Fluence, lightweight, you know, you could do various seating positions. Yeah, yeah. this thing is cool. We have a raid from Twitch. Hey, all you Twitch raiders, what's going on? Any car type influence your Abbasi guitar design? Um, there isn't a specific car, but this paint job is actually directly 
taken from a BMW M3. I believe they call it Austin, Austin Green? Austin Yellow. Uh-huh. Uh, it's kind of like a chartreuse color, but yeah. Um, so car design, I think, really informs my guitar design. Uh, I, like in I like objects that are purpose-built, um, but the result looks like the combination of its function, but with like a type of design like I, right? So everything from Mac laptops to Porsches, they perform a function and they're designed in a way that like makes that function, um, this just facilitates it. So aerodynamics is essentially what's going to, mm -hmm. the shape of a car is basically informed by aerodynamics, right? And so yeah. you get certain shapes because that's how you want to reduce drag or whatever. But through that angle of approach, you end up with these beautiful sort of designs. So with the guitar, um, I thought it'd be cool to take a similar approach, but have the design reflect the ways in which the body interfaces with the, sh the guitar. And so it's just like trying to make the guitar more seamlessly integrated into your torso and your hands and everything from where you're centered and th the actual overall weight of the guitar are things I considered. Um, it wasn't directly pulled from a car, but the color schemes are mm -hmm. and some of the design language I wanted to look fast and yeah. and modern, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, I feel like you know, like I have so many guitars here, but it's a different tool for a different job, right? Mm -hmm. Every everyone is like a different thing. Um, you know, some of these they're really cool guitars to play, but you know, for me to play at home is cool, but I can never play a show of it. It's not yeah. a tool for the show. Yeah, now you have some pretty specific needs for when you're on stage, you know. Yeah, and you can't just use, you can't go up there with a flying V and expect <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Not gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, what about so the transition for you from your old signature guitar with Ibanez to that? What was that like, actually? I'm curious. Um, so, you know, I got there was a lot of prototyping with Ibanez, and at a point, I realized that I just wanted to take it further than I felt would like actually be feasible within their sort of business model. I mean, I'm mainly an eight-string guy, for instance, so I think there was just gonna primarily be only an eight-string guitar. But I felt like this design deserved to be a seven or a six or, so um, eventually it just seemed like I was compelled to move forward and just take the design um, that I made up and, and just really see it developed into more than just a single single iteration mm -hmm. um, and I it's a learning process because it depends on the scale of which you're building the instrument but there's a lot of moving parts there's a lot of vendors a lot of suppliers a lot of materials a lot of variables so a lot of the learning process had not that much to do with the guitar per se but like the industry of guitar building uh -huh. um, I mean the paint process alone is extremely complex and there are, there's different finishes and there's different there's all these all these considerations to make an instrument, you know, come together. And then there's this element of magic where all the parts equal more than just the sum of their parts. It's like when you grab a guitar, you're looking for something that, you know, you're saying, yeah, locking tuner, stainless steel fret, mahogany body, but you actually are trying to connect with something that is more than just those individual, you know, mm -hmm. you can have ingredients for a meal and then you can have the actual meal and that that heat and that aroma and all that is like, to me, a guitar can be greater than the sum of its parts when mm -hmm. it comes together in a cohesive way. And that's really cool, you know? Yeah, you can't get what you want, you start a guitar company and get all the parts you want in a guitar. <laughs> yeah, dude, look. It's, <laughs> basically, it's, it's, I think 2020 is, I mean, we live in an age where we have resources as musicians or as content creators or as artists that I think a generation before didn't have and um I think it'd be a shame not to like actually take the reins as an artist and and kind of do as much as you can on your own because I think as an artist you're in the best position to decide how things get done mm -hmm. and I, I mean I see how you're evolving too beyond being a band member or founder, there's all these other ways in which you can, you are of value. And so you're at the center of how you are actually like presented to everyone else. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just part of the evolution, you know? Yeah, you don't really get that in the past. 
and and I always thought, you know, it's kind of weird. When I, when I play on stage, I'm very different than what I'm at, I am in real life. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I don't really go to a bar and start shouting at people and go, well, "Look at me!" Right. You know. But Jumping on stage, I like to do stupid things and kick it high in the air, jump off, and you know, jump in the crowd, all that stuff. So it's almost like, oh, the, all these things now, Twitch. Let me actually be kind of a normal person that I am. Oh, it's and like the opposite for you. Yeah, the opposite <laughs> in a way. I would say a little bit. I don't know. You know, you see how weird I'm at home. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're you're funny because on stage you are kind of a different person. Yeah. And then off stage you're actually you're pretty chill. I think <laughs> the streaming is in the middle. Stage is peak Herman, and then like YouTube and, <laughs> and streaming is it, and then like the Herman I know is like pretty reserved, you know. But uh -huh. I love that you have all these different, you know, yeah. facets to your personality.